Hello, I'm Microsoft MVP Tom Morgan. I'm excited um, to be able to tell you about some new functionality that has just arrived in Microsoft Graph for Teams platform developers. It concerns the ability to set your Microsoft Teams presence. Well, not your Microsoft Teams presence, the Teams presence of any user. So exciting new API functionality that we can get into on this call and I can show you uh, exactly how to use it. Hello, just cutting in here, Tom from the post record edit. Um, since recording the video, publishing the blog post. A couple of people have reached out and actually said that this call is not working for them. And I've been doing some investigation and yeah, uh, that's definitely the case. Uh, not for everyone, but for some people. So some of the things I'm about to talk about might not work for you. If you're seeing 401 errors, if you're getting service error exceptions, um, then you're not alone. We're figuring it out. Um, I'm kind of reached out to Microsoft and assistance and some help. Um, as soon as I know some more, I will be updating the blog post. So the blog post will be linked in the description of this video. So go check that out for the latest um, information on exactly what's happening with this issue. All right, back to the video. All right, so we've already had uh, the capability for a little while to be able to get the presence using delegated permissions. So when you're signed in as a user, you can go and get the presence of that user. You've also been able to use change notifications to subscribe to the presence changes of one or more users. So now that's an application permission. So as an application, you can go and subscribe to the presence changes of multiple different users. Now, however, via um, two new API uh, calls that I'm gonna dig into, you're able to set the presence of any user in the tenant. So this is an application permission. So it's not a delegated user permission. This does not mean that a user who's signed in will be able to sort of programmatically change their, their presence. This is an application permission. However, you could totally do that because once you've got that application permission, you can just set the presence on behalf of the user. So um, you've got lots of different options for what you want to do there. This works uh, in, a, you need a, a specific permission to make this work. Um, so uh, the permissions that you need is, it's a new one um, and it's it's called presence.readwrite.all. Um, so you can go and find that and, and make sure it's assigned to your application. It does require tenant consent um, to, to get that done. But once you've done that, you'll then be able to make this post call um, to slash users slash uh, the ID of the user slash presence slash set presence. There's a few things you do have to provide when you're making this post call in the body. Um, and I'll put an example of what the body looks like in about now. Um, you need to pass the availability and the activity. These are two keys that you'll be familiar with if you've done anything with presence before. Um, and they, you need to provide both of those and they provide, they kind of tell teams what to do with the presence. So it's the kind of the availability is the kind of green, amber, red. Um, and then the activity is some detail behind that because there's lots of different, you think about um, your red status, your busy status. There's a number of different reasons you might be busy. You might just be busy, but you also might be in a call, you might be in a conference um, and, and things like that. So you need to provide the availability and activity. You also need to provide an expiration duration. What is this? Um, it is the amount of time that the, this presence change that you're providing, how long it should uh, live for. And you provide that um, as a duration, it's a. It looks like a slightly odd way of providing it. It's actually a, it's a standard for durations. Um, it is a bit unusual. It is worth digging into. It's ISO eight six zero one, and then if you go within that, um, you can. I'll put a link to uh, in the notes and on the screen um, for the the Wikipedia for this. Um, but if you go through that, there's a specific section for duration um, that defines exactly how to. Uh, how to define uh, things like an hour, a minute, um, three hours, and three. It, it's just a standard notation for specifying durations. It's not based on start and end date and times. So you provide that, you post it off, you get a 200 back, and the presence changes. Now, I said there was actually two API calls that um, were available to developers. Now, that's one of them. The other one is for clearing presence um, if you need to. Let's say you've set the presence and you've set your expiration duration for a particular time. Um, and then you find out that actually that was that time was wrong. You need to recall the presence, essentially reset the presence. You can um, call this API call called clear presence. Um, and uh, that will reset the, the presence. It will basically kind of remove uh, your application setting presence from the, from the system. And, and that's worth digging into actually, because 
if you think about how presence actually works in teams, there's lots of different things that can contribute to a user's presence. And it just got more complicated with this set of APIs, right? Because you've got all the things that can happen in the client, and there might be more than one client um, around what a user is doing, whether they're available or away. And then layer on top of that, one or more applications may be calling set presence to set the presence. So what does Teams do with all these different presence um, inputs, if you like, all these signals about the presence? Well, very similar to how Skype for Business used to work, um, Teams will aggregate present state. So it will take all these things in and it will then um, expose one consolidated combined present state. And in general terms, what users do in the Teams clients will take precedence over what applications do. So if your application says that you're away and then you go and toggle your status to be available, your, you're gonna, your team status is going to end up as available. An application can't really override a user action in that way. Um, and then within that, generally, the, the busy state will take precedence over the available state and the available state will take precedence over the away state. For all those reasons, when you're making an API call like set presence or clear presence, you need to provide your application ID in the body as the session ID. That tells Teams um, to associate the presence changes you're making to your application and means that when you then call clear presence, it Teams knows uh, which presence it is that it needs to clear. So you will get an error if you don't pass your application ID as the session ID. One interesting thing to talk about just before we leave this topic um, is some of the activities that you're actually able to set. So within the busy state, you can actually set the presence to being in a call or in a conference call, which is kind of really interesting to me because you wouldn't normally do that in, you know, if, you, if you're going to answer a call in Teams, Teams would set the presence for you to being in a call. If you join a meeting, Teams will set your presence to be in a conference call. Um, why have an application do that. Why give the ability for an application to set presence? Well, there might be, there's a number of different reasons that this might be the case. For instance, if you're using third party non team solutions to join calls and meetings, for instance, Zoom or WebEx, you could imagine maybe those applications might evolve so they can set your team's presence for you on behalf. So you don't then get incoming calls if you're in a call or meeting in another place. Um, or maybe if you uh, join on the mobile application, if you join a mobile call, maybe there'll be a, uh, like the ability to kind of toggle through a third party application to toggle your state, uh, your present state to being uh, busy. One thing I'm really interested in at the moment is Azure Communication Services. You probably know that if you listen to this channel. Um, and through Azure Communication Services, you can make and receive peer to peer calls and you can join group calls as well. So uh, maybe in that kind of world where you've got these applications that may end up being Teams applications or just third party applications using something like Azure Communication Services to make calls, you want to be able to signal to other Teams users that actually this person is in a call but not in Teams. Um, and so you want to prevent them getting incoming calls. So you can kind of see how um, this would be really useful to kind of prevent calling on calling basically by giving applications the ability to say this user is actually in a call or in a conference even though they're not in a Teams call or conference. All right, so some exciting new API calls unlock some new functionality for applications to take control of and set users presence. Um, if all that sounds interesting to you, check out the blog post as well I did about it because there's some examples in that. Um, and if you've got any questions, let me know. Thanks very much for watching.